Uh, hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this talk. Uh, the name of this talk is Recursive File Analysis in Zeek. My name is Kazi Olam. Uh, here's a couple of things about me. Uh, I'm an undergraduate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. These are some places that I've worked at, uh, MITRE Corporation, Reservoir Labs, and MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Um, so today, uh, I will be going over the process of creating a generic Zeek file analyzer. I'll be talking about the specifics of how you want to organize your source code, uh, how you want to organize your uh, imports, and things like that. So you can basically make any kind of file analyzer for any extension. And secondly, I will present uh, a zip and PDF file analyzer that I've been working on for the past couple months. And I'll be showing you what those logs look like when you process PCAPs with zip and PDF traffic in Zeek. So first of all, to make a simple Zeek file analyzer, um, you can use this utility. So in, in the Zeek source code, we have this uh, in the Zeek source tree, we have this init plugin tool, which can help us begin making our analyzer. And all you need to give it is the directory, the namespace, and the plugin name. And any external libraries that you are trying to use for your plugin have to be specified in CMakeLists with Zeek plugin link library. And, and then you have to add this line to the beginning of plugin configure in source slash plugin.cc. And in this line, basically, the only thing you want to change here is analyzer tag, which is a it's like a unique identifier for the analyzer we're making. And also over here, we we want to specify the class of our analyzer. So like basically the class we are adding to the file analysis namespace. And then we create a new analyzer.cc and analyzer header file in source with the appropriate definitions. And we also need to add the Zeek plugin CC to CMake lists. And now at this point, our bare header for the zip analyzer should look something like this. So as you can see, um, there isn't much going on here. We just have a constructor. Uh, and we have these function prototypes. So these three function prototypes, undelivered, deliver stream, and end of file, these are what we want to focus on when we're making a file analyzer. So basically, undelivered is called whenever we have file bytes missing. And we were basically given the offset that we have bytes missing at, and also the number of bytes we are missing. And this is, a, this is a special case when we have file bytes going missing. We know that analysis is no longer valid when we have missing bytes. So we want to return, in, in the case of the zip analyzer, we return false. Because if we have missing bytes, we cannot recover the original data properly. And next, we have a deliver stream function. So this is called whenever we have, so we're receiving ordered chunks of data. and Deliver stream is called whenever we receive a new chunk. And what we're supposed to do is we have a pointer to the first byte of the chunk, and we also have the length of the chunk. So one thing we, we might want to do is keep track of a larger file buffer as these chunks come in. And then lastly, end of file is called when we receive all the bytes in our stream. So once we receive the entire file, that's when we call end of file. And all three of these functions return Booleans because we want to indicate if analysis is still valid or not. So we usually would return true. Otherwise, in the case where we have undelivered bytes, that's when we that's the case where we might want to return false because analysis is no longer valid. And so one thing we can do when we're creating a Zeek plugin is we can define types that are accessible from both Zeek script policy layer and the C++ event engine. 
And we can do this by creating a built-in function file. And so these two images show what our built-in function files might look like for the zip analyzer. So on the left side here, we here are some constants and records that we have for the zip analyzer. So we have like a max depth and a max space usage. So this controls how far we want to we would recurse into analyzing a zip file and also how much space that we would want to allocate before we stop analyzing. So this is this is to make sure that we that we um, remain within the amount of memory that we want to extract and we don't go further past that. Now, and we also have this info and metadata record. So here we define, so in a built-in function, we can define records that we're gonna be using for the events that we generate. So these are the records that we pass to Zeek when the Zeek events are called. And on the right side, here we have an events.bit file. So here is where we specify the new events that our analyzer will call. So for the zip file analyzer, we have a zip file header event. So this is generated every time we see a file with the zip signature. And what it does is it basically returns a string of all the decompressed. So, so a zip file basically has a bunch of files compressed inside of it. And, and when we decompress a zip file, we are going to return a string of all the uncompressed file names. Um, and the reason why we do that is so in the log, we can see what all the uncompressed files are in a, in a zip file. And we can do some further processing depending on what those files are using this other event called zip file info. And this event is called every time we decompress a new file. So, uh, so this info record right here would basically contain a whole decompressed file. So it would contain like the number of bytes in the file and a pointer to all the bytes. Or, or in this case, since it's going to a Zeek script, it would just be a string containing all the bytes in a file. And we can use this. We can we can we can use this, and we can store these bytes. And that would mean that our zip analyzer is uh, basically extracting all these uh, all these uh, uncompressed files as as the zip file is getting analyzed. And yeah, and, and the third event is a zip error. So this is called whenever we have a parsing error in our zip file. And this, this makes the zip analyzer um, basically stop analyzing safely. So just since it's an error, it's going to stop analyzing the zip file and it's going to uh, delete everything. OK, uh, and each additional a built-in function file that we make has to be accounted for in C make lists using a call to Zeek plugin biff. And all new biff types should be explicitly defined in scripts slash types.zeek. So those records that I was talking about previously, um, we have to specify the fields of those records in scripts slash types.zeek. And as you can see here, we uh, as an example, we have like the metadata record has some zip metadata that we might uh, care about when we store our logs. And also this info record is storing uh, decompressed bytes of a file, uh, as I mentioned before. And then also in this other image down here, uh, we can see the default values for the constants that we set. So we have like a max depth of three and we have a max space usage of 10,000 bytes. And these can be tuned from a Zeek, a Zeek script because they're redefinable. And so lastly, we have an init.zeek file. And in here, we want to register the analyzer for a specific MIME type. So in the case of a zip analyzer, we are registering for the application slash zip MIME type. So this means every time Zeek sees a file with this MIME type, it will send that file to this analyzer. Uh, and also, the first argument is going to be the analyzer tag that we talked about before. So in this case, that would be the files analyzer zip. And also in this file, 
uh, it might be helpful to initialize any log streams that we're using. So if you want to have like a zip log, um, you would want to create that log stream in here. And the zip analyzer, it works on every single zip file. So it works on these four mime types. Um, uh, apparently, so, so these are like, so these three over here are for uh, Microsoft um, formats. So like a Word document, um, presentation, and spreadsheets. So these are all files that you can unzip. So they have like zip signatures. You can unzip them and you can see what files were compressed inside. And the zip analyzer works on these as well. And yeah, and so the zip analyzer, analyzer basically collects zip archive metadata and also decompresses the files inside those archives for further processing. And here, here is an example of what uh, one of these zip logs might look like. So we have uh, like a unique file ID for the zip archive. And then we have a string containing all the files that were compressed inside. And then we also have a bunch of other fields indicating things like um, zip compression method, encryption method, flags. These are these are like the flags that are returned by libzip since that's the library I used for the zip analyzer. And also I worked on a PDF file analyzer and it's very similar. Uh, it basically does so if you if you look at this image right here, um, it's the same four functions, or no, the same three functions that we, the three prototypes that we have to implement, uh, deliver stream, undelivered, and end of file. And the only thing that would change is instead of analyzing our buffer as a zip, we would analyze it as a PDF. And for the PDF file analyzer, the library that we use is a uh, Podofo 0.9.6. And this PDF analyzer is based is actually based on an original work at this URL. Um, but I added a couple of new features such as full body text extraction, embedded URL extraction, and embedded file extraction. And this is this is the the log record for the PDF. So these are all the uh, metadata fields that we can write analytic scripts for. And, and lastly, uh, the coolest feature of the zip analyzer is the recursive analysis. And this means that if we have like a zip file inside of another zip file, we can recursively analyze those nested files. And the way this is done is we simply detect the signature of every, of every uncompressed file. And if it has a zip signature, we just recurse on the file buffer using, and then using those constants from before, max depth, max depth, and max space usage, we can make sure that uh, we're not going to run into some type of zip bomb or something that would cause our analyzer to crash. And on the right here is we have an example log of what it would look like if we ran into a zip bomb. And you can see that at some point, it ran out of memory, so it stopped adding entries to this log. And also, the recursive analysis is capable of, of calling other analyzers. So this means, uh, let's say we had like a PDF file inside of a zip file. Uh, we can forward those bytes, those uncompressed bytes of the PDF file into the PDF analyzer and call those events on it. So this, this is powerful because we can do this from a Zeek script. We can, we have, uh, we have this dictionary and we can basically give it uh, a, a key and the key would be a mime type. And then the string value would be the analyzer tag. So in this image right here, we are specifying that the zip analyzer can recursively analyze PDF files using the PDF analyzer that we have. And similarly, you can attach uh, things like the hash analyzer uh, or any other file analyzer just using the MIME type. And 
the reason we were able to do this is because we call an opt internal table in the in the C++ code, and this lets us iterate over the Zeek table uh, from the Zeek table that we made in the script to look for those keys, and then we can um, we, we can basically use the signature framework to detect um, what the mime type is using magic bytes, and and this lets us like we can probably have any any kind of analyzer for we can support basically most file types if we had an analyzer for those and we can eventually uh, have like a recursive analyzer that can support like a large amount of files in addition to just zip files and i think that's very powerful and yeah and the source code for for these two analyzers is at these urls um yeah, that's it. Thank you.